The resurrection of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcome it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I pass on to you that was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures say. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. Just as the scripture says, he was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James, and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I cannot even work... I, I'm in fact I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results, for I have worked harder than any other God I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message you have already believed. The resurrection of the dead. But tell me this since we preach that Christ rose from the dead. Why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For I, if, for if, there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles will all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the, the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. And you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world but in fact christ has been raised from the dead he is the first of the great harvest of all who have died so you see just as death came into the world through a man now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man just as everyone dies because we all belong to adam everyone who belongs to christ will be given new life but there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For the scripture says God has put all things under his authority. Of course, when it says all things are under his authority, that does not include God himself who gave Christ his authority. Then when all things are under his authority, the Son will put himself under God's authority so that God, who gave his Son authority over all things, will be utterly supreme over everything everywhere. If the dead will not be raised, what point is there in people being baptized for those who are dead? Why do it unless 
the dead will someday raise, rise again. And why should we ourselves risk our lives hour by hour? For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily. This is as certain as my pride in what Christ Jesus our Lord has done in you. And what value was there in fighting wild beasts, those people who off if we says if there will be no resurrection from the dead, and if there is no resurrection, let feast and drink for tomorrow. Let's feast and drink for tomorrow we die. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good character. Think carefully about what is right. And stop sinning. For to your shame I say that some of you don't know God at all, the resurrection body. But someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question when you put a seed into the ground. It doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. And what you would put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. Then God gives it the new body he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Similarly, there are different kinds of flesh. One kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. These are also bodies in the heavens and bodies on the earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. The sun has one kind of glory while the moon and stars have each moon and stars each have another kind and even the stars differ from each other in their glory. In the same it is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground, but sorry, in the ground when we die, but there will be raised to life forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but there will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but there will be raised in strength. They are buried in natural human bodies, but there will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. The scripture tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person, but the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. What comes first is the natural body, then the spiritual body comes later. Adam, the first man, was made from the dust of the earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. Earthly people are like the earthly men, and heavenly people are like the heavenly men. Just as we are now like the earthly men, we will someday be like the heavenly men. What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret we will not all die but we will all be transformed it will happen in a moment in the blink of an eye when the last trumpet is blown for when the trumpet sounds those who are those who have died will be raised to life forever and we who are living will also be transformed for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will Never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives... He gives but thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically 
for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. This is the word of God.